Hey guys, it's Lydia here from LA 3D Printing, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to 3D print your own awesome lithophane lamp. So, let's get started. Alright guys, if you are new here, thank you so much for joining. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let me know if you are new uh, down in the comments below. But starting off, I uh, actually 3D printed a lithophane lamp for my parents for Christmas and they loved it. And I thought it was really cool and ever since then I've been experimenting some more on how to get the perfect lithophane lamp to actually make it look really cool and show off as many pictures as possible. Um, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how I did that. It is super easy and um, I'll, first I'll let you guys know what you're going first, to First what you're going to need is a uh, light of some sort. I do like to use a LED light, um, a light bulb, not the strips. Uh, some people do use strips but I think a actual light bulb looks best. Um, and also you're going to need some kind of light stand. You can actually buy a uh, light bulb stand or a pre-lamp and just take the cap off um, and already have your um, bottom cylinder that will hold the actual light bulb. But for me, I just used a little um, light bulb thing that you screw the light bulb into and then hook your own wires up to. And I'll show you guys that. Um, you'll see it a little bit uh, later in the video. Um, but then I just uh, designed my own base for the actual uh, lamp and that is where my light bulb stand is going to sit into. Um, but you can pre-buy that and then just build your lamp around it. Um, and then other than that, you're just going to need some pictures or just one picture. I like to use multiple with the lamps because you get to put a whole bunch around it and it is not too spread out. And then um, to actually make your uh, pictures um, into the lamp, you're going to need um, a software online and I will show you guys that and you're also going to need um, to go to canva.com and that's where I put all my pictures together into one kind of like banner and again I'll show you guys that also. So let's hop onto the computer and I'll show you guys how I did this. Alright so, so to start off these are what my lids look like so this is the top and this one is the bottom. I just created them in Fusion 360 so I basically actually created the bottom first and as you can see here and then I just uh, took away all that stuff and then um, made it into the top. And it was super easy. You just have to do the dimensions according to your lithophane. So you print your lithophane out first and then you measure it and then create this. It's super, super self-explanatory. I'm not going to do a whole video on that. Um, but going to our software, you want to go to 3dprock.rocks um, and you can just search it up. It says it right up here. Um, and then you want to create a uh, picture. So what I do to create my pictures is this is actually what um, my what the pictures on the lithophane are. So you want to go to Canva, and the size I have it as is a thousand nine hundred and twenty by I believe a hundred. It doesn't really matter. Um, it'll figure it out. Um, in the software when you import it, but this is the kind of picture you want to have. You can also do panoramas. It doesn't have to be multiple pictures, but this is how I make multiple pictures in one. So once you have this, I like to just screenshot it instead of just saving it. So I uh, just screenshot it and it'll show up down here. Um, so then you go into the software, you go to image, and then you drag and drop your image into here. And as you can see, um, right away, it just creates it as a flat model. And you want to go down here to outer curve, not solid cylinder, because that will not work. So go to outer curve, and then you have to go um, up to model settings, and go all the way down here. And to curve, you want to change it to 360, make sure it's all the way around. And then um, these are my settings. I just have it scaled to this already, because I can scale it up in my slicer. Um, the thickness I have is 2.5. Um, and then I like a border on it. I'll show you guys what the border is in a little bit. It just basically gives it a little bit of lip instead of just a raw lithophane. So I like 1.6. You want to make sure your border is not um, bigger than your actual thickness because then you'll have a problem with overhangs. And then uh, the rest is just 0 0.8 and 4, 0, and 360. And then we're going to go to image settings and you want to make sure it is on positive image here. You do not want a negative image because then it will not turn out um, when it's done printing. So make sure you have positive image and then everything else just stays the same. So we're going to go back to model and we're going to go to refresh and then it'll just um, fix everything. And there you go. So now we have the actual model here. And from here you just go and download it. Now, I Okay, so we have it in our slicer now and you can see it is 
actually fairly small as of right now. Um, uh, well, you can double tap on it and it shows that it, the Z height is 75.25. So that's actually pretty small. Now I would like it bigger. Um, so all I do is just go over here to scale and just scale it up. And I always go to uh, the Z height. That's how I approximate my big my scale um, or my size. So when you want to go into your processes over here, um, you want to go to your settings and infill percentage is 100%. Make sure you have that. Um, layers, I usually do four or three perimeters. You basically just want it to be completely solid, no infill, but if you have um, Simplify 3D, your infill is actually completely solid. There is no extra lines in there. Uh, but if you have Cura or something else, make sure you just do as many perimeters. You could do 11 perimeters just to make sure everything is completely solid and there's no lines in there. I, on my TiVo Tornado, print with a raft. You don't have to. Um, but I would recommend printing with a raft or a brim just to make sure it doesn't peel off the bed. Um, and again, the infill, uh, the, the infill pattern doesn't matter. And um, from there, everything else is, is plain. I always have a uh, fan on no matter what. It's just PLA, normal PLA settings. Um, and temperatures are normal. Again, you do not want support on. Um, and other than that, everything's pretty set um, one thing you want to make sure you have actually checked down here um, if you are using simplify 3d if you have Kira it doesn't matter um, but you want to make sure you want to check avoid crossing outline for travel movement so that means um, it'll only travel inside your actual border so there will be no stringing or beading on the outside or the back of your lithophane so that's it for that um, so then we just slice it and then bring it over the printer and start printing it so I'll show you guys the actual print and then um, we'll just uh, put everything together from there. All right, guys, so about 21 hours later, this is my final print. So as you can see, this is not giant, and that was what I was going for. Um, you can make many, many other things, like a lampshade. Um, with, with this technique, Just as you just want to make it bigger and scaling and stuff. But uh, what I was talking about earlier about the border, as you can see up here, there's a lip there, and also here, that's the border and it also goes on the bottom too. So I like how a border turns out. It just helps everything a lot cleaner and definitely with the caps on them, the top and bottom, everything looks nice and clean. Uh, one thing I actually do to this thing is I use my new stuff that I got for Christmas, my XTC 3D. This is a PLA smoother. This is an example of a lithophane with it on it. It makes it really shiny. Um, it kind of fills in the layers, but I don't think I'm gonna be putting this on this one with my parents, the one that I made for my parents. I did put it on there, but um, I might just spray this with a couple coats of matte, uh, just clear spray paint, just to bring everything together. Um, I do like how it looks with this, but I don't really like the shininess. I mean, everything else looks good. You can still see the picture in it, um, but I'm still debating if I'm gonna do that yet. Um, but other than that, after the, after the lithophane prints, you just have to wait on the tops and bottoms, and then we can put everything together. Uh, again, um, doesn't matter the scale of your lithophane. I I always go by the the height, the z height of the lithophane for the size, and then you can use a caliper or um, a ruler or a measuring tape or something to um, estimate how big it is. And then again, for designing the caps, um, the top and the bottom, I just print the actual lithophane first and then I designed those on Fusion 360, super easy. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Um, I will definitely try to help you guys out. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna let the uh, tops and bottoms print and then we can assemble everything together. All right, so um, I everything is printed and I did glue the bottom base on um, and I did do a little coat of that um, clear filling line stuff for the top here just to get it a little shiny. Um, now, what you could do to make things easier, um, if you know that your base is going to fit your lithophane, you can actually, in your slicer, basically print them at the same time, but fuse together. So I could have just printed it like this, but instead I just did glued it together, and I also kind of painted it white down here um, so that you couldn't see the glue because it was epoxy and it was yellow. Um, but I did put in the light bulb thing. It just slips and sits right in this little part in here 
and um, I will have to connect longer wires to it and then just connect it to a plug-in. Now you can also get a little switch so you can leave it plugged in and then um, just flip the switch if you want it on and I think that's really cool but I don't want to glue on the top I just want it um, removable so that I can put the light in it but other than that we're basically done so I'm going to do some soldering and um, connect the wire so that we can actually turn it on and then we'll put a light bulb in it and I'll show you guys the finished product. Alright guys, so I did finish it. Everything is dry now and um, all put together. So this is what the bottom looks like um, and that is just the epoxy that we put on there. Now if this was going to be for somebody I was selling it to, um, I would probably cover that up, um, make it look a little nicer. But for what I'm doing with it, um, it doesn't really matter uh, because you won't really be seeing it. So this is just what the bottom looks like. This is not um, in there or it's not glued in there. The only thing glued is the wires so that it will be flat when it sits down. And um, again, if I was selling this or something, I would cover up the wires and make it look a little nicer. And with this, you just plug it in and that will turn on the light. Um, now I think a better idea would having a little switch on it so that you can keep it plugged in and then just switch it on and off. Uh, but for this, I just have a normal plug-in and I think that will work pretty fine. So I did put a light bulb in here. So I'll put the cap on and then we can plug it in and I'll show you guys what the final product actually looks like. Alright guys, so this is the lamp. Now I think the quality looks really amazing. You're kind of at an angle right now, but um, close up it looks really awesome and the lithophane definitely got all the details. The, the pictures came out very, very nice and you can definitely see the individual ones. Um, I think this method of putting many pictures um, together looks really awesome. Uh, and like I said, men like I mentioned earlier, I did uh, paint my first one, the lid black, but I honestly think the white looks pretty good because it makes a real lamp version. Um, and also, I did actually put an LED light in here, but because of my filament type color, um, it wasn't a all natural white. It was it gives off more of a naturally um, look, kind of like a greenish or yellow look. Um, but I think it looks really cool. It gives a unique look to the lithophane and definitely um, looks really good when you personalize it. So, Alright guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you're new here, please subscribe and don't forget to hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. Please let me know if you learned anything new in this video. And don't forget to go check out my other videos on my channel. I work very hard on them and I do try to upload every week. Um, so I'm doing pretty good as of now and I hope you guys enjoy the videos I'm uploading. If you do want to see a certain kind of video, please let me know. Tell me what you want to see and anything new you want to see on my channel. Again, I hope you guys in this, enjoyed this video. I had so much fun making this awesome lithophane lamp and I do hope you guys make one of your own. If you do make one, please let me know and tag me. Um, or at me on your Twitter or your Instagram. Both of mine will be down below in the description. And um, I just want to see your guys' creations. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.